Right, let's start with something simple, uh, something basic that you usually have to check on your bike if uh, something's wrong, and that is a voltage measurements. Um, most of the time you have to uh, check the, the battery voltage. So we have this cover, and on the big board Viragos you can measure the battery voltage without removing the seat or the tank. I just have to work this thing off. Right, so this is our battery, and this is the ground strap, the negative terminal that goes down here around the engine and it is attached to the engine block behind the brake switch so that grounds the engine directly the positive terminal is deep inside but we have the charging lead that comes from the main fuse and um, that basically is the charging lead um, coming from the regulator rectifier going into the main fuse and after that the cable comes down here and goes in there through that tunnel there that uh, that goes to the positive terminal of the battery now to check the voltage of this battery we have both uh, terminals available we have the negative right here and we have a positive right there and the first thing I'm going to show is how to probe a connector like this, a plastic one, without disrupting um, or without disconnecting and such. I just have to set up the stand. So, with big board Viragos in this position, without removing the seat, we have access to the negative and the positive of the battery, so we can check the battery voltage. If I turn this thing a little bit that way, I might be able to set the, the, the instrument up here. So you can see the numbers on the screen. Okay. So, there we are, ready to measure the voltage. Now, this is a 12 volt battery, so we need to use the 20 volt range. So we turn the dial there, with the little arrow pointing over there. And as you can see, at the moment there's no voltage connected to the multimeter, so there's no reading. Obviously, the black is the ground, so that has to come here, and the red is the positive, and that can go in from the back. And there we go, 12.5 volts, 12.56. Now, another thing um, that you often have to measure is the condition of your battery, how, um, how well it uh, can handle um, heavy loads like uh, cranking when you start the bike up. In this case, you have to leave it hooked up and record this number. Just write it down or memorize it. And we have to check how far this goes down when we press the start button. Because the further it goes down, or the, the lower the voltage when you're cranking, um, obviously the worse the condition of your battery is. Uh, at the moment we're recording the idle voltage, which means that's the the voltage the battery can provide when it's resting but we have to know how uh, the battery handles stress and load so now I'm going to turn the key and see what happens if I just give it uh, the, the, the if, if I just turn the ignition on uh, just to give it a little bit of a load by energizing the TCI the fuel pump and such it shouldn't plummet too much Oh yeah, I also should open my fuel tap. Right. So let's try this again, this time with the fuel tap open. See, there's only 0.15 volts, uh, that's the difference. And as you can see, the ignition circuit and the instrument lights, since the ignition is on, are consuming a little bit of battery power it slowly goes down but it should be still enough to start the bike up okay now we have to keep an eye on that uh, multimeter while we are pressing the start button okay so we could see that the voltage went down to ten and a half ish so it lost two volts two and a half volts while I was cranking it 
Now that is still within spec. That is still usable. So this battery still has some life in it. Obviously not a huge amount because uh, if it was over 11 volts that would be just fine. Uh, but usually the worn out batteries that crank le really slowly and they don't have too much uh, power to uh, give you spark at the same time. Uh, they plumb it down to 8.5, uh, 8 volts, 9 volts, something like that. So if you see that on your screen, your battery is probably messed up a little bit. Another common thing with Viragos, big Viragos uh, specifically, is grounding. How good the connection is between the battery and the engine or the frame. Now, on big Viragos, it is a cable that comes from here, as I mentioned, and it is bolted onto the engine block uh, where the clutch cover is. And uh, the quality of this connection can be checked. If you do the test like I did before and check what was the what the lowest voltage was when you fired the bike up or while you were cranking it, you can compare that number to the, uh, the value measured directly on the engine. Because in that case, we are going to measure how good the ground is on this one. Obviously, if this cable is a piece of crap uh, or we have a bad connection, when I measure here, uh, I should see a lower number than I saw when I was measuring directly because some of the power is going to uh, be lost with the, on this cable. It can be, of course, a shit cable. It can be a dirty terminal here or a dirty terminal on the engine block where it is bolted onto the, cra uh, the case. It can be a dirty surface on the case. But with this measurement, you can check if the connection uh, is fine, if the cable is fine, or if the contacts are clean. So I'm going to do this right now. So the grounding cable is detached from the battery, and I'm going to touch the top of the cylinder with it while I'm cranking. And we'll see if the 10.5 volt uh, uh, voltage that we saw measured directly on the battery is going to get less or lower while I'm doing this. So. Let's turn the key and crank. Now, as you could see, in my case, there's no difference. That is because my grounding is good, my cable is good. I cleaned it earlier this year. The, the terminals, the little, um, not spades, the, the eyelets are cleaned. So there is a good metal to metal contact in my case. If you see a much lower number or just a lower number, you have to check this grounding connection. So that is how you test if your starter gets full grounding or not. The other thing you have to check uh, from time to time, or in case you have uh, a problem with charging, is the charging voltage, of course. Now, uh, the battery's resting voltage, as we know, is 12.5, uh, and to charge the battery, we need more, of course. Uh, when the bike is idling around a thousand rpm, that's what I'm going to do. I start it up and I set it to a thousand rpm, uh, at least 13 volts uh, measured directly on the battery. So I just check my connections. I plug this thing in into the battery because I'm I'm checking the battery, uh, the, the, the 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 voltage that reaches the battery. So I'm plugging it here and the positive is in the charging lead and I'm going to fire it up and see uh, what the charging voltage is on idle and then I'm going to rev it up to 3.5k and, and check again smooth operation to be honest I'm doing everything one-handed but you could see that the charging voltage uh, went up to 14 ish and as I raised the the RPMs uh, it went a bit further up 14 and a half a little bit more maybe and as you could see 
that's our resting voltage now so it did charge the battery a little bit obviously it is discharging now because the resting voltage is the best uh, the battery is around two, uh, 12.6 volts when all the chemical reaction inside the battery is settled down and it's just sitting I can disconnect these now so yeah as you can see we did charge properly if the charging voltage that you measure on higher revs goes over 15 volts um, or when you're idling it is less than 13 volts um, or 13 and a half rather then probably there's some problem with the charging system obviously uh, the voltage is going to build up because you're measuring on the battery and what you're checking is the voltage on the battery as this thingy starts charging it up but you could see it on the measurement it slowly went up to 14 volts around the thousand rpm so it takes a little bit of time a few seconds but it is going to build the voltage up slowly and if it settles down around 14 volts uh, everything's hunky-dory and you can rest assured that your charging circuit um, or the regulator and the alternator they are perfectly in a, in a good nick so you don't have to worry about that uh, that's all I wanted to say for now so I'm going to come back with uh, different topics like checking resistance like on the the, the ignition coils uh, checking switches and relays uh, later on